Good morning and good morning to the system that is expected to become a major hurricane over the next few days. This is the latest. We have a really impressive area of convection that's been bubbling up over the last several hours. And this system has become much more organized across the northwestern Caribbean Sea. And one of our greatest concerns is that this will eventually become Hurricane Helene as it moves into the Gulf of Mexico as we go into either late tonight or even into tomorrow morning. And eventually it's going to have the potential for rapid intensification, which means that that this could easily become a major hurricane on its approach to Florida. Here's a closer view of what is expected to become a big hurricane over the next 48 hours. Right now, there is a ton of convection, big boiling towers essentially, that have been building up across this system. We have a very impressive spin as well. This has become a lot more organized over the last 12 to 24 hours. And as we go throughout today, I don't expect this to really intensify a whole lot. It will probably start to get to a stronger tropical storm. But as Helene moves into the Gulf of Mexico is really when we need to keep our our eyes peeled to the system because it has the best shot of becoming something like a big problem, especially to areas like Florida. National Hurricane Center has begun issuing watches and warnings, especially for those in the Yucatan Peninsula in Cuba, but they've also begun to issue warnings and watches back over in Florida. We have our first tropical storm watches in effect for Southwest Florida, and you can only expect these to continue to basically go up and down the entire West Coast of Florida and as well as back over in the Florida Panhandle over the next couple of days days. But overall, this is a system that is expected to become a hurricane by as early as Wednesday. We are expecting that by Wednesday evening back over in the southern Gulf of Mexico. And then from there, rapid intensification will take over. And this is expected to quickly intensify into at least a Category 2 hurricane by Thursday morning. If not, it could be a Category 3 by then. Now, notice the National Hurricane Center, at least on this outlook, did note that there is currently no M, which means major hurricane. However, between these two icons, that's where we're expecting at least a Category 3 hurricane, which would just be to the west of Tampa and just to the south of Tallahassee. So before landfall and even upon landfall, this is still expected to become a major hurricane. Beyond Thursday, this will move inland and eventually go into the uh, Ohio Valley where it's going to weaken, bring some showers and also some heavy wind gusts and the potential for heavy rainfall. And then after that, we're actually going to get a special effect or weather phenomena called the Fujiwara effect, where this is going to turn all into one low pressure system. There will be two low pressure pressure systems up there. It's going to combine into one, basically producing just more rain for those in the Ohio Valley over the weekend. One of the biggest reasons why Helene is bound to rapidly intensify in the Gulf of Mexico is because of the tropical cyclone heat potential that exists, especially across the southern and southeastern part of the Gulf of Mexico. So right now, Helene is back down in the northwestern Gulf of Mexico and eventually is going to track right through the Yucatan Channel, and it's going to enter this environment where all that red and you know, white colors are are, that indicates a very high amount of heat potential. Essentially, it's a loop current that is going to be in place that'll be able to spin this storm up even further. With very deep, warm waters, it's going to be able to have the potential for rapid intensification as it eventually approaches Florida. So we can really expect the greatest rapid intensification to happen in this area here as it makes its approach towards Florida Wednesday night into Thursday morning. Now, flipping over into the computer models, we are expecting rapid intensification over the next 24 to 48 hours as this tropical storm and eventual hurricane moves into the Gulf of Mexico. And it's really going to begin between the Yucatan Peninsula and Cuba. And after this, it's going to basically press the gas pedal and intensify very quickly as it moves into that loop current as we go into Wednesday afternoon and evening. Notice how this hurricane model, the HAFSB, is indicating some pretty intense stuff happening just northeast of the Yucatan, but it really becomes more more apparent by Thursday morning. Right now, the HAFSB model does indicate that this could become more than just a Category 3 hurricane. In fact, as it approaches Florida Thursday afternoon, this particular model brings it up closer to a Category 4 hurricane as it approaches the Big Bend of Florida. Now, with that said, there is still some uncertainty whether it will actually achieve this intensity, but I don't see why it wouldn't, especially with the environment right now that's in place, and especially with this corridor that it's going to be able to go through with a very high likelihood of rapid intensity. Intensification. Nonetheless, all of Florida really should be prepared for a major hurricane, whether it's a Category 3 or 4. It's not going to make a major difference at the end of the day. It's just going to be more storm surge and higher winds if we end up getting a Cat 4 or something along those lines. Right now, this model has it making landfall sometime around sunset on Thursday back over in the Big Bend of Florida. Another notable thing is that this has continued to shift more to the east. A more easterly track would promote more storm surge, especially for areas like Tampa Bay. So we really need to 
to watch this track very closely over the next 48 hours. I do expect this to keep going back and forth, and once it becomes more apparent on a direction, we'll definitely know more about what impacts could be dealt, especially to areas near Tampa. If we put this all into one big picture with a bunch of different ensemble members, basically a bunch of different computer models on one graphic, you'll notice that the spread in intensity still remains relatively high. We have a lot of different models that indicate landfall Thursday afternoon and evening in Florida, varying from a Category 3-4 hurricane all the way down to a tropical storm. I mean, it's still a very large range. But with my forecasting experience over the years, I really don't think that this is just going to be a tropical storm, especially with how favorable the environment is in the southeastern Gulf of Mexico, with very little to no dry air, basically no wind shear, and also that loop current that we've been talking about. The ocean currents are very favorable right now for there to be rapid intensification. So you need to be prepared in Florida for a major hurricane. I'm not saying that to scare you. It's just simply the forecast right now, even from the National Hurricane Center, that does expect a major hurricane. Now, here are the ensemble members put onto one graphic. Notice the spread is still pretty large with where this is going to make landfall, but the general consensus is that this will make landfall somewhere up in the Big Bend of Florida. Again, this could shift a little bit west and east over the next 24 hours. It's still a fluid situation, so be prepared for landfall elsewhere and be prepared for some big impacts if you are anywhere in that cone of uncertainty, because that is where the eye of this hurricane could go. Now let's jump into the impacts that are expected out of Hurricane Helene. And as of now, this is the GFS model, kind of giving you an idea of the timing and when rain will arrive. We are expecting the outer bands to arrive to western Florida as early as late Wednesday night. That could lead to a low-end tornado risk right near the coastline. Once we go into Thursday morning, this eventually moves closer to shore. Heavy rainfall will start to be a problem near Tampa Bay. Light to moderate rain for most of Florida. Heavier rain will start to arrive to the Big Bend by as early as around lunchtime Thursday. Thursday, and eventually landfall by Thursday afternoon into the evening hours will bring the worst of the wind and as well as the worst of the rainfall to areas back over in the Big Bend of Florida, just to the south and east of Tallahassee. Once we go into Friday morning, this thing is out of Florida and it's going to be a fast moving hurricane. This is not a slow one, meaning that rainfall is not expected to be the biggest concern. The biggest concerns really are going to be storm surge and as well as the wind threat that could lead to power outages in Florida. This is the GFS model indicating the wind speeds. This this is by Thursday morning. We are expecting the ar arrival of tropical storm force winds across areas near Tampa, Sarasota, and Cape Coral with 40 to 55 mile per hour wind gusts. Eventually by sunrise, those winds are really starting to pick up across almost the entire state of Florida with wind speeds really starting to ramp up between 40 to 50 miles per hour. This will eventually lead to some isolated power outages. They'll be a bit more scattered back over along the immediate west coast of Florida. Once we go into the afternoon hours, the winds really start to pick up even near Tampa. Tampa, especially if the eye is this close to Tampa, we could see some pretty significant wind and also storm surge will start to become an issue for areas near Tampa Bay and as well as back over in the Big Bend of Florida, just to the south and east of Tallahassee. By around landfall, winds will start to peak around 70 to 85 miles per hour, perhaps even a bit higher than that, back over in Gainesville. Rest of Florida is dealing with a huge wind field of tropical storm force winds. And the reason why today's you know video is titled, this hurricane's going to be huge, it is going to be huge. This is going to be a huge wind field. This is way larger than what we had with Adalia back in 2023, which was honestly still a very concerning storm, but it ended up being a very small storm. This one is forecast to be much larger than that one in nature, so that'll bring higher wind speeds to much of Florida. Most of the areas, though, will be dealing with tropical storm force winds, but that could still lead to some scattered power outages, especially north of I-4 and then also back over here west of I-95. Once we go into the evening hours, the wind will start to die down a little bit more, and then by Friday, we are starting to return a little bit more back to normal with maybe some dry air on the back side of that as well. It'll make it feel nice on floor across Florida on Friday. Wind gusts back over in the Carolinas are also going to be a concern, though this is not expected to enter into the Atlantic Ocean. We are still expecting the potential for tropical storm force winds, perhaps even hurricane force winds back over in areas like South Carolina, eventually moving into North Carolina and eventually going into Virginia. So we'll have the potential for more power outages anywhere from Georgia back up into West Virginia and then eventually going into later Friday, that wind will start to die out. We'll still have a pretty large wind field as the Fujiwara effect will start to take place where we have two low pressure systems combining into one. So that wind field will still actually be relatively large, but overall it's just going to be you know, your normal gusty winds behind a cold front, for example. That's what we'll be mostly dealing with. Total rainfall accumulation, not expected to be substantial, but most of Florida will see between one to three inches of rain. Areas, especially near the Big Bend, will have the potential for four to eight inches of rain. 
Georgia and also back through the Carolinas, we'll probably see that same range, three to six inches of rain for those areas, maybe even up to eight inches of rain in some spots. And this is a storm surge map indicating where the worst of the storm surge will likely be out of this eventual hurricane. Right now, the worst of the storm surge is expected to be between about Spring Hill, Florida, back near Crawfordsville in Florida. But do notice back over in Tampa, we are still going to have some potential for storm surge here, probably somewhere in the range of two to four or three to six feet of storm surge. But again, we'll know more details about the specifics on the forecast from the National Hurricane Center later today. So make sure that you are subscribed to the channel and like the video as we are going to continue to post updates here throughout the next several days before and as well as during landfall.